All right, hello everyone. Here we are, Ghostly Glades, hole seven, par four. And my first look at this at tour number seven here. So this is gonna be from the second tee box. And, you know, pretty much uh, what I recommend would be to probably go to this left-hand side. Going over to that right-hand side, you're probably gonna want a tailwind to go for that green or go around the green. You can see that there's kind of trees over there blocking the right-hand fairway. So you may want to, uh, you know, position yourself away from that just to be on the safe side. Um, of course, you know, from this fairway over here, you'll still be able to make the shot. So um, as I was mentioning, you know, if I tried to go over here, there's gonna be some trees blocking my view. And what I'll probably do in Tour 7, just to get a little bit of wind resistance up, you can see here I have my Thor Hammer. I would recommend Thor Hammer over a Pac 4 you could see my opponent using. Now I'm going to use about two rings here on this shot right here. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest reasons that I would recommend using the... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Call it the bunker there, but should still be okay. Uh, be able to get a decent shot at the green here. You can see that this uh, fairway here is going to be very angled, sloped. Um, what I was saying, though, about uh, the Apocalypse versus the Thor Hammer is uh, there's hole number one on this course specifically that it's going to, you know, cover yourself a little bit better if you have the backspin. So even if you have Thor 4, Thor 3, for instance, you know, you're still going to be able to have enough backspin to stop it very easily on that hole. So in my opinion, you know, Thor's hammer is going to be the play, even if you have to give up some yardage. You can see I really didn't even have to power up there. Um, nothing really fancy to be able to play this hole. Um, it's more than anything, just focus on the fairway, which you can see that I did a poor job of doing. However, you know, I kind of know where I can make a mistake and where I can't. So uh, I really wasn't too worried. You could see I really wasn't powering or anything. Um, I knew that even if I make a mistake, you know, it's not going to be one that's detrimental to my round. So that's kind of what you see going on there. Now, what I'll usually do for this hole is maybe about, uh, you know, you could see that I was, you know, I have a feeling that I'm kind of maybe two, two and a quarter per ring. So I'm kind of thinking right around two-ish rings or so. So that's what you'll see me doing there. And if I can get my perfect ball, you know, there's going to be a reasonable chance that I could still end up making it. Otherwise, here you can see, well, it looks like I probably would have came up a little bit short, a little bit more wind uh, effect there um, would have resulted in my ball coming up short because I really didn't play enough through the hole. You could see into that headwind that the ball was checking up and not getting out to as far as it needed to. But you can see, you know, very straightforward here. Um, if you follow my Tour 4 guide, uh, it's going to play very similarly to what you want to do in Tour 7, just with a little bit more wind effect. And I did kind of go over a little bit, you know, the strategy for that pitch. So do check that one out. I'm going to split these up, guys, and catch you guys on the next one.